In today's Dollar Tree Challenge, we will be headed over to Anthropology to get loads of inspiration, and then we are headed over to the Dollar Tree to see what we can DIY for a whole lot less. With that being said, let's go ahead and get started. For the first project, anthropology might not be a first thought when you are looking for wreaths, but they actually have a lot of really beautiful options. They're just kind of expensive. So this maple wreath here I thought would be perfect for fall, but the sale price still was almost $60. So I decided to go to the Dollar Tree and grab these maple leaves that are in this kind of vibrant burgundy color. And for the wreath base, I actually just took an old wreath from spring that I just had tulips in here. So I'm just going to pull the tulips out and I'll save those for next year's spring so that way I can just repurpose something I already have. You guys might remember when I thrifted these florals for just one dollar. They're originally from Joanne Fabrics and then I picked up 10 of those maple stems from the Dollar Tree. Now I didn't like the initial color but I liked the shape of the maple leaf so I'm going to spray paint these with this spray paint here that was almost like a plum brown color that is just going to kind of tone down this vibrancy of of the maple leaves from the Dollar Tree. So I just gave a couple generous coats. And if it wasn't completely covered, that's okay. I just wanted it to be toned down. So as you can see, the ones on the left are much more subdued and much more my aesthetic. So I just trimmed the maple leaves down to the appropriate size and placed them in this wreath form. And this looked great. I could have stopped here, but then on my last thrifting trip, I also found this set of florals for just $2. So I decided to also add that to this wreath, primarily on the inside, just to make it nice and full like the one from Anthropology. So for just about $15, I think I have a really similar look on a budget. If you're somebody who really loves anthropology, you are probably somewhat of a detail-oriented person because a lot of the decor pieces have all of these little extra details that make the pieces feel very intricate and special. So I love this black side table here. It's not just like your average side table that you would find at like Target or Ikea. It feels very unique and special. So from the Dollar Tree, I grabbed two of these wooden plaques just because it had that arch shape already it makes it feel a little bit more interesting i also found this scrap piece of wood here in my garage and i'm going to cut two pieces down to the exact same size and that is what's going to connect these two arched plaques together so i just did so using my miter saw if you don't have a miter saw you could absolutely use a miter box or you could go to a hardware store and have them cut the pieces for you so this is the basic structure that i was kind of looking for for this side table after cutting down those two pieces of wood, I needed to connect them together. So I just did so using some wood glue and then I just clamped them down until the wood glue dried. Next, I just needed to take some quick measurements and I wanted to focus on the base of the table first. So I added a little bit of wood glue to one of the plaques and I just traced around where it was going to need to be so that way it was nice and centered on this bottom plaque here. Once those pieces adhered to each other, I then wanted to add a little bit of extra detail to kind of disguise the two pieces being glued together. So I grabbed four packs of the Dollar Tree kebab sticks. I added wood glue to the wooden base and then I cut the kebab sticks down to the appropriate size, again, using my miter saw. And I taped them in place so they would be nice and secure. And it just gives this little extra detail that you might not notice from far away, but up close, it just makes it feel a little bit more interesting. But before I added the dowels to the last piece, I wanted to add these L brackets just so the top of the table would be nice and secure. So before I attach the brackets, I like to put a little bit of super glue gel on there just to make sure that the bracket stays nice in place and everything will align nice and straight. I paneled that final side with the dowels and finished attaching everything together. And while that was great and I could have just sealed it, I wanted my table to be black like the inspiration from Anthropology. So I used this satin black spray paint by Krylon and I gave a few generous coats um, to the entire table, the bottoms, the tops, everything, and then I sealed it. 
and this was fine but something was still missing for me so I decided to add these wheels to the bottom of this table just to give it a little bit more flexibility but before again I add the wheels on I like to secure things with super glue gel just so things stay nice in place before I screw them down and that really wrapped up this side table project for about $20 I think I'm able to achieve that interesting and intricate look on a budget when it comes to, again, that kind of detail-oriented mindset, anthropology pays very close attention to the details that they're adding onto the decor pieces and making them feel really just kind of like quirky and interesting. So when it comes to the pieces that you would wanna pick up from the Dollar Tree to kind of replicate a similar look, I would definitely say stick to kind of your wood pieces or your glassware pieces and avoid kind of like the plastic area of Dollar Tree because it's really hard to make that look high-end. Taking a glass vase from Dollar Tree, taking two pieces of suede ribbon that I had on hand and some mortar mix that I had on hand, and I'm going to combine the mortar mix with some paints as well. I'm going to take a chip brush and just kind of apply a light layer around this glass vase. It was a little bit too textured for me personally, so I then went in with some 120 grit sandpaper, and I'm just going to smooth down some of the really rough spots of this glassware piece. After sanding it down, I did want to do the mud mix trick, which is basically just to take mud outside and then mix it with a little bit of water and rub it all over the vase. As it's starting to dry, then I kind of wipe off some of the excess so that way it has a little bit more dimension. After the mud mix had been wiped off and dried, I went in with some flour and cinnamon just to again give it more dimension. With DIY projects like these, it's all about layering on top of other layers to give it a really intricate and interesting feel. Next up is the boxes at Anthropology are really beautiful. They have more of these kind of like vintage inspired glam options, but then they also have these really organic feeling options as well. I love these rattan ones on their website, but they are quite expensive. So I was thinking of what we could use to kind of get a similar look. And I contemplated using a placemat and just kind of cutting it down. But then I opted to just from the Dollar Tree grab some craft wood and I cut that in half and then I grabbed a woven placemat from the thrift store for 30 cents. So what I'm going to start off by doing is attaching these pieces down to the woven placemat using some hot glue so that way the sides of our box would be covered in the same fabric. After cutting that off to the appropriate size I added a line of hot glue down to the placemat so that no other um, strands would kind of come out and everything would stay nice and secure. I first started out by folding over about an inch and a quarter of the placemat and hot gluing that down and then gluing the bottoms of each of the sides of our box down to the placemat, meeting it where the front of our box would be. So I did one side, then I did the other side. And then before I attach the front, I wanted to glue the back side down. So doing so again, I'm going to add hot glue to the back of the wooden pieces so that way the box would be able to kind of overlap onto itself. And then all that was left to do was attach the front piece again with additional hot glue. And you should have something that looks like this. So I did want to add a little embellishment to the front just so it had a little decorative feature on there. The last thing I did was I just stained the outside of each of the dowels of the placemat as well as the inside wooden pieces. But this is how this project came out. For just a few dollars, I think I have a really chic look that is so budget friendly. If you are somebody who is always feeling like there is stuff everywhere on your surfaces, investing in a set of wall hooks is always a good idea. And again, Anthropology has a very kind of quirky take on wall shelving and wall hooks, but I think you can definitely come up with something from the Dollar Tree that also looks really fun and chic, and it doesn't have to cost an arm and a leg. So from the Dollar Tree, I grabbed two of the plunger pieces, the dowels from them. I didn't actually take the plunger part, just the dowels. And we're basically just going to connect these pieces together. I did decide to cut off 
sections from each of the dowels just to make sure that everything was nice and flush because on one end it was like the screw part for the actual plunger and then the other end was kind of rounded. After cutting these down to the appropriate size, I wanted to work on the bottom first. So I decided to pre-drill some small holes in each of the dowels as well as the wooden piece and then just basically connecting them together. I did decide to sand these down first just so that way it could take an application of stain or paint um, well at the time. So pre-drilling the holes just to make sure that the wood does not snap and I'm going to align them, adding a little bit of super glue gel so again it stays nice and secure and then that way everything will stay nice and intact while I'm connecting the pieces together. So this is the basic structure of what it looks like. So I wanted to kind of give it a more rustic feel so I decided to just give it a couple coats of Magnolia's shiplap spray paint and then taking these kind of D-ring brackets from another Dollar Tree piece and attaching them to the back of this wall bracket. I like to do the tape trick. It works every time and there's very minimal measuring involved and then now it's just time to style it so this could essentially go anywhere so I decided to style a couple pieces on these s hooks that I also picked up from Amazon and this is how it turned out I think this is a really affordable way to get my surfaces to be cleared but I didn't have to spend a fortune um, on anthropology Anthropology is very unique in the way that it does wooden pieces of decor, especially when you go to Crate and Barrel and Pottery Barn, you'll find just like your standard kind of basic pieces, but anthropology is very different in this way. They like to make their things feel very special. So how do we create that using Dollar Tree materials? So you can take this so many different ways, but I think a good place to start is actually in the Dollar Tree Plus section and grabbing some sort of wooden tray, wooden round. They actually have quite a few different options at Dollar Tree and they're just three dollars so for the legs for this riser I wanted again to make it feel interesting so I've shared with you guys before when I thrifted this bag of wooden pieces that I didn't really have a place or use for them so I decided to connect um, six of them together so three legs total I'm going to unscrew these hanger bracket pieces from the back I'm going to add a little bit of wood filler to these kind of pieces where they meet because they didn't match up quite perfectly sanded those down and then I'm going to add some super glue gel as well as some hot glue to connect our kind of interesting riser legs there once everything was connected I then went in with some stain so I actually mixed two stains together that were not the same consistency but I really liked the tone that it was giving it just was kind of this like ashen wood color it was a mix of Tismith gray semi-transparent stain as well as a gel stain in the color coffee but the wood tray that I was trying to to replicate from anthropology had some distressing to it so then I went in with 120 grit sandpaper and I just kind of distressed the top primarily just to give it a more aged and weathered look and this is how it turned out for just a couple bucks I think I have a really beautiful piece of decor that can transition me throughout all of the seasons depending on what I place on top of here and last but certainly not least is to make a bowl candle. So Anthropology has so many beautiful options for candles. It might be one of my favorite things that they carry. And I especially love the things that they put their candles inside of. So when I found this metal bowl at the thrift store, I thought this would make a great candle for fall. But then I think for Christmas, I want to put some really pretty ornaments inside of here. So from the Dollar Tree, one of the best things they have are these glass candles and they have an incredibly long burn time which is why I love them so much so I just made some markings at the bottom of this metal bowl here where my wicks will need to go I grabbed a wire rack just so all the wicks would stay in place melted everything down on my stovetop at a low heat and I also melted down some candles just for scent purposes because these candles from the Dollar Tree are unscented I started out by first pouring in all of the wax inside of the metal bowl and then added the wicks after. I usually do it the other way around, but I thought for this specific case, it would be better to do it this way instead. Placing the wire rack on top and then inserting all of the wicks where I had marked my markings. And then afterwards, once the wax had solidified, I'm just going to trim the wicks down to the appropriate size. And this is how our bowl candle turned out. For just a few dollars, again, a very transitional piece of decor. I can enjoy this candle now for the fall season, but once fall is over, this bowl can be transformed into something else.
And that about wraps it up for today's video. Thank you guys so much, especially for last week. You guys have been amazing and so patient with me and I can't express my gratitude enough to all of you. Let me know down in the comments which project was your favorite and I will see you guys next week because we are going to do some Hobby Lobby dupes that I'm very excited to share with you. So with that being said, I hope everyone has an amazing week and I will see you next time. Bye for now.